Hello EFD squad and welcome back to Continental Club where we discuss the hottest topics in European football. Joe and Pat still skiving. Flat so here to save the day is Dougie and it's Michael McLaughlin. How are you gentlemen? Yeah, very good. Excited for the Easter break. Yeah, same mate. Do you yeah. know what I'm excited about? The new shag pile. Yes, very thick. It's to reduce the yeah. echo in here. But more importantly, Easter's coming up. What Easter egg will you be asking for? I, I am a classic, I'm a cream egg man. Can't go wrong with Ooh, a cream that egg. that is very classic. Uh, I'm a bit of a sucker for white chocolate, so Milky Bar. Oh milky yeah, bar. the yeah. cheap white chocolate as well, the yeah. nasty stuff. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Vegetable yeah. oil. Vegetable <laughs> oil. <laughs> I'm all about the Kinder Bueno. Ooh. That's like my crap, love Classic. that shit. Anyway. I didn't know they actually did Easter eggs, but... Um, yeah, yeah. Mass, they're just massive versions of the, of they the Kinder They have the toy egg. in yeah. there as well. Anyway, we should just move on. Yeah, um, just the first question is from Kraz Jukka 99 and it is, is Gabriel Jesus going to leave Manchester City? Now, this sounds pretty absurd from the off, yeah. but the Daily Mail have reported that Gabriel Jesus and his entourage have turned down an offer of 90k a week uh, and want to put negotiations on hold until post-World Cup because if he bangs, he'll have more Probably leverage, won't he? Yeah. Because then Real Madrid will be like, you know what, we are replacing Karim Benzema. So... Gabriel Jesus. Um, but the 20 year old, uh, he did look set to sign a new contract before Christmas, but discussion stalled even then. Uh, Manchester City, though, won't be panicking because his, car, uh, his current deal runs until 2021 and he's only on 65k. I say only. He was a bit of a gamble at the time from Palmeiras. I don't think they, mm. Pep, envisaged that he'd, he'd bang quite as quickly. Um, so but for a player probably... of his calibre, 65k is, is somewhat of a bargain in mm. this market. But apparently he's holding out for over 100, which is probably a fair reflection of his ability in, in the market. Definitely. Definitely. And in, your, in that Man City squad as well. And uh, he's been pretty good despite his injuries, hasn't he, mate? Yeah, he has. He's been very unlucky with injury. He broke his metatarsal last year. He's obviously had that knee injury this year. Um, but he still scored 15 goals and provided seven assists in 31 league games across uh, the two seasons. He's averaging 0 0.6 goals per 90 this season and a goal every 141 minutes. And considering he's been stop start in and out of the team with that injury, that's very impressive. That's mm. third best in the City squad behind Sterling, who averages one every 128 minutes, and Aguero, who averages one, a quite frankly, 90, ridiculous 97 minutes. Uh, with Aguero leaving two, that was the news last week. Um, saying that he wanted to leave at the end of his current contract to go back to Independiente in 2020. This is a little bit worrying uh, for City. They don't want to be you know, chasing around for too many strikers, particularly in the current market when they've got two fantastic ones at the moment. Um, but could things... What, what do you think the World Cup will mean for the Jesus story in the Cubs? Well, it kind of depends how far they go. And it also depends, obviously, if, if Jesus is starting every game. Obviously, Bobby Firmino has been in great form this season as well. So he's been tipped to take that uh, centre-forward role. But, um, but, yeah, I mean, in terms, of, yeah, in terms of the World Cup, Brazil are you know, up there as favourites with France and Germany, I'd say. They've been in fantastic form under Tite. Um, I mean, Jesus himself has scored nine in 15 games for Brazil and seven of those in qualification, so that bodes well for the World mm. Cup. Um, the team themselves have only conceded 11 goals in 18 games in qualifying um, and obviously right. beat Germany the other day, so they've um, exercised the demons of 2014 there. Um, and, and genuinely, um, just off the top of my head, I cannot think of Brazil being in as good a form as this in my time yeah. as a football fan, really. Maybe since like the 2002 World Cup, but they won it, obviously. well-rounded prospect now they are they? yeah i mean they've, they've got obviously like over the last i'd say kind of six years i guess they've had a lot of talent come through kind of neymar kind of spearheaded that i guess and now it seems like all of those players who we've been kind of wondering why they weren't performing at international level or yeah. not playing at international level um have all, all seemed to be I mean, gelling it's been a long time since brazil have been this threatening uh, a sort of a prospect but I think they're going to be, yeah, up there f for sure. Uh, and I, I, Gabriel Jesus, will he move? Uh, if, if we're just going to tie this back off to uh, the question from Kras Jukka, uh, Manchester City aren't under any great pressure, are they? He's, he's there until 2021. I think they probably will offer him an improved deal. And then maybe anything that's sort of bubbling under the surface now regarding wages will just settle and he'll continue to play. He's a young player. He's, he's voiced his love uh, for Pep on more than one occasion, hasn't he? And I don't think there's a more 
appealing club for, for players of that age to go to right now. We've seen Leroy Sane come out of the press and say that um, this is just an unbelievable place to be because of the, the one-on-one -on -one coaching that Pep yeah. gives us. And we've seen what he's done with Raheem Sterling as well. So short of a £100 million offer from Real Madrid, and maybe even more, I'd yeah. say his future's pretty is pretty safe at yeah. City. Do you think otherwise? I, well, no, I just I just thinking that like yeah, I mean if, if someone is going to come in for him, surely they would offer at least a hundred million like for him. Mm, like yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think he's, I don't think it would be out of the question for a club just to take that kind of gamble considering the current market with and his, considering how good his scoring has been over the last two years. He's only twenty years old. I know, and his trophy cabinet for his trophy cabinet for a twenty-year-old is ridiculous. Mm. He's he's got a Brazilian league, he's got a Brazilian cup, he's got a league cup. He'll soon have the yeah. big Premier League. And he might have a Champions League all before he just, I think he'll just be yeah. 21 by the time the Champions League final comes around. Real Madrid seems like the natural, if he was to leave, Real Madrid seems to fit. But I actually don't know whether Real Madrid need a complete overhaul of their forwards. They've only scored one fewer yeah. in the league than Barcelona. Yeah. They've scored 22 in eight Champions League games this year. Um, it doesn't seem like they, I mean, Benzema will need replacing eventually, yeah. but... It just seems a little rash. I think there's too much talk about Real Madrid's lack of goals when it's actually they're conceding far more mm. than they ever used to. Um, and there seems to be issues in that dressing room again. Yeah. Um, so I don't know whether he'd naturally normally go. So I think City are actually well, in a well, pretty good position. Real Madrid seem like the only viable destination other than PSG. I think Barcelona are pretty much spent out for the next couple of years and their forward line is relatively complete, isn't it? And, and Especially they're, if they're going to get greasy. If they're going to the spend money, they'll probably be looking to... Uh, provide cover for Iniesta because his future's kind of uh, in, in a, a little bit of doubt, isn't it? Um, but yeah, PSG, Real Madrid, would any other club you know, be able to plump up £100 million for him? Where can you see Gabriel Jesus' future? Let us know in the comments below. Right, before we move on to our next section, me and Ginge went up to Melwood, that's Liverpool's training centre, to do a challenge with Chalco Coconut Water featuring such legends of the game as Joel Matip, Alberto Moreno, and Gigi Wijnaldum. As a result, you sent Soccer AM your Sunday league goals. Please keep doing that because there's been some absolute corkers. Uh, but remember to hashtag LFC squad goals. Uh, here's some of the best ones. Roll VT. <laughs> We ask you to send us your best Sunday league goals. And here are some of our favourites. Keep sending us your goal. With the Champions League just around the corner, we thought we'd field this question from David underscore Kempel and he's asked, which English Champions League winner was the best? Mm. Now we have a choice between Manchester United of 98-99, Liverpool of 04-5, Manchester United 07-8 or Chelsea 11-12. Probably not. Definitely. McCubbin, I think yeah. I know who you're going to go for, being the... Manchester United fan and, you know, a complete romantic of the game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, yeah, 98-99. Can't say I remember it too well. I was only about four or five. Um, but it's quite funny to look at these four teams who have won the Champions League and, and two of them clearly not be two of the best English teams of the last 20 years. Yeah. Like, it's funny to see that Liverpool side and that Chelsea side in there when, I mean, Liverpool, for one, have had better teams in the last 20 years. You know, Arsene Wenger's Invincibles uh, never really got there. Obviously, 2006 just about missed out. Um, and then, yeah, like Jose Mourinho's Chelsea definitely should have won the Champions mm. League. And even that did. Ancelotti season as well. They yeah, were, true. Chelsea were remarkable. True. Year. I'm not even sure how far they got in the Champions League, but obviously they were, you know, record-breaking goals in the Premier League and whatnot. Um, so, uh, so yeah. But back to 1999, magical time. What a time to be alive. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously that Man United team were pretty special. Obviously, the treble winners. Not many teams in the history of football can say they've done that. Um, and yeah, like, I mean, for example, Paul Scholes, um, he's been asked about, about it a number of times, about what, what his favourite team was. Was it the 1999 one or the 2008 one? Obviously the 2008 one. But uh, he, he always says that 1999, he, he prefers that team because he, he claims that every time they went into the dressing room, there just was not the feeling that they could, it was possible to lose a game. So yeah, yeah, every, everything seemed to just about work out. Um, but yeah, great, obviously a great team and, and a, uh, goals from, from all over 
um, as well. I mean, that, the, the later United side obviously had the likes of Ronaldo scoring a lot, like a lot. Um, but uh, but this side had you know Cole and York, obviously magical pairing up front. Um, I think York got about 29 goals in 48 appearances, Cole 24 and 43, um, and even Solskjaer, who only made 17 starts that season, mm. managed to get 18 goals. So it shows just how just how good he was off the bench. Um, and then, yeah, like David Beckham as well, a bit of an unsung hero as well, got something like 11 assists and uh, six goals that season. Um, and then finished second in the Ballon d'Or that year. He I did, yeah, well. yeah. So, um, so yeah, the kind of yeah, kind of announced him himself as a star mm -hmm. on the international stage. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's there's so many standout performances from that year. United being the kind of dominant force in English football was still a relatively new thing, really. They'd only really been dominating for about five or six years. So, like the idea that they could go and just win a European Cup, or at least be considered among Europe's elite, still wasn't really a thing. Italian football then was was much stronger than English football. Um, you know. Barcelona and Real Madrid were still considered kind of a cut above English teams. So I think for that reason, I, I would have to go with them. And obviously other great stories like George Best apparently left uh, the camp now on about 89 minutes and then listened to the two goals uh, going in the oh taxi no. home, apparently. Poor guy. I mean, that's, that's, that's what uh, folklore, the big uh, folklore has it. But yeah, so uh, yeah, unfortunate for him. But um, yeah, yeah. part of the great. fabric of the day. <laughs> Let's quickly <laughs> visit Liverpool then. Yeah. because you can't talk about the Champions League without the miracle of Istanbul sure. cropping up, For sure. can you? But instead of talking about the game of the day, let's talk about the squad and how they got there because this was a team that is just about scraped into the Champions League the, the season before. I think they finished fourth. Um, the squad contained the likes of Traore, Biscan, Florence Cinema Pongel, who actually made more than 20 appearances wow, uh, that season. But they were heavily reliant on a range of characters, not mm. just Gerard, through that Champions League sure. season, weren't they? Louis Garcia being one though. Louis Garcia, yeah, he got five goals in 12 appearances and their oh. top scorer that season was Barros, Gerard and Garcia and they only got 13 goals in all competitions. Um, so it's far from a vintage side and they actually really struggled domestically. They finished um, and their UCL group stage was very average. They played six games and lost two of them, lost mm. away at home at Monaco and Olympiacos and they only scraped through the gr uh, group stage. Um, on goal difference. Yeah. I don't think they'll go down as an all-time great in English Champions League winners. Whereas the next one, Chris might well do. Yeah, I'm going to take United 07-08. Uh, just looking at it from a purely objective point of view, I think United have potentially not had a squad like it since. No, um, and the, ra the range of talent in there was unbelievable. In the league, uh, obviously competing on multiple fronts as well, like you were uh, sort of pointing at earlier, emphasising earlier. Um, not a lot of Champions League winners have also uh, won the league in convincing fashion uh, simultaneously in this, in this list of teams we're talking about. Um, but they won the league with 87 points and it was a really closely contested league that season. It went right down to the wire. They finished two points ahead of Chelsea, only four above uh, Arsenal. And that's not been the case uh, in years sure. gone by. Um, so they were pushed right to the very end but managed to compete compete on multiple fronts, even given that hectic schedule. Uh, yeah, they won 27 of their 38 games that season as well. Uh, only won more on four occasions in the Premier League. Um, they did crash out of a couple of other competitions in the FA Cup. I think they went out in the sixth round to Portsmouth. I think they went out of the League Cup to Coventry that year. Wow. Uh, which Ferdinand no doubt, was in goal yeah. for the Portsmouth game. <laughs> Helped them at the tail yeah. end of the season. Um, but as we said, still had the league to contend with, so uh, we won't use that as a stick to beat them with. Uh, but in Europe, again, just imperious, hugely impressive. Went unbeaten, a la Juve, prior to getting mm. beat by you know, Real Madrid. Uh, <laughs> played 13, won 9 and drew 4, only conceding 6 good, actually. in 13. That's didn't right, realise yeah. it was that good, actually. Yeah, yeah. Didn't and that given the calibre of team the they faced, mate, Leon, yeah. who back then were... Were they stronger than they, they are now? Yeah, yeah, they were still yeah. in, they were still um, in there. Still in their, kind of they in their league year. Period, they yeah. won thing, seven yeah. league titles in a row, didn't yeah. they? And, and they had yeah. the like, you know, Chris, Sasapa, both both weird players to pull from that team. But <laughs> I, I, cool I used yeah. to sign them on uh, Football Manager, Benzema, yeah. of course. Um, yeah, they beat Lyon, Roma, Barcelona and Chelsea in the knockouts. Uh, scrape past that Barcelona team with that Paul Scholes goal. Uh, so the calibre of team that had to be on the way there and that they faced in the group stage, uh, really, probably can't be contested. Um, key men, you know, I had an unbelievable back five then. All at the peak of the uh, yeah. yeah, peak Vidic, 
Peak, Ferdinand. or Ebra, Peak, Ferdinand. Peak, West Brown. Peak, West Brown. <laughs> Don't. Hasn't he, hasn't he won two Champions Leagues? He has, yeah. He's part of yeah, the like, yeah. treble winning he side was, as well, yeah. wasn't he? He was on the bench in 99. What, what a guy. On his day, West Brown was actually a very, very good defender. Yeah. Um, Fantastic and servant for Sunderland in his latter uh, years as well. well. Stop getting Sunderland in <laughs> every video, mate. I'm sick of it. Um, but Ronaldo, 42 and 46 that season, including 31 in 31 in the league. Wow. Which is... Remarkable. A sign of things to come. Right? Unbelievable, mm. Jeff. Yeah, it was quite a prescient uh, warning, wasn't mm. it? Uh, Rooney chipped in as well with 18 and Tevez with 19 goals. So a little bit like that team you were talking about. There was yeah. a very impressive return from more than just one yeah. player, which again, hasn't been the case since what? And like, is Chelsea maybe when Maluda and Anelka and Drogba all chipped in? Yeah, true. And Lampard. Mm. So you, you've got Aguero, maybe it's City, City this season. City this season, yeah. multiple. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you're, that, that's my pitch. You're now left with the unenviable task mm. of putting forward Chelsea's winners. This isn't a team you wanted. Yeah. It was a team that you were stuck with. I uh, don't, because I don't You've been given two shitters. Yeah, <laughs> these are probably the most yeah, glamorous Champions the, League uh, winners of the modern era. Yeah, I'll cover them. I'll cover them. I'll do my bit. Yeah, no, Go Chelsea on, in 2011-12, you'd never suggest them as the best uh, English winner of all time. They finished sixth in the league that season, 25 points behind Man City and one point off Newcastle in fifth. Ademba Bar and Papi Cisse inspired Newcastle. They lost 10 games, 10, sorry, 10 league games that season. 10 league games, including to QPR, Villa and West Brom. Uh, so it, was, it wasn't pretty at times. They had AVB in charge until the 4th of March. He then lost a game, I believe, 1-0 against West Brom, which seems to be the death rattle for many managers these days. You lose to West Brom and you're out. Um, and on a side note, I interestingly read uh, yesterday that West Brom were about to be uh, relegated by their fourth manager named Alan. Uh, <laughs> but that's, that's on a Good. side note. love that. Uh, and they were down 3-1 to Napoli in the last 16 of the Champions League. Di Matteo then takes over and 12 You know days. that 3-1? Wasn't that when AVB totally cleared out all the... Lampard was on the bench, Cole was yeah. on the bench. All the it season was, pros. It was such a message of, in, like, this Bertrand is my team. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, trying to assert back control. Di Matteo then crazy. took over. Obviously put back in all the big dogs and they then beat Napoli 4-1 at home just 12 days later. They then beat Benfica, Barcelona, we obviously all remember that mm. semi-final. Real backs to the wall effort, down yeah. to 10 men. Torres, Ramirez with that chip, unbelievable two legs. And then Bayern on penalties with a lot of luck in that final, but fair enough, they did it. Yeah, that's a valiant pitch, mate, but I'm not sure the fans are going to go for it. <laughs> Let us know your <laughs> choice by voting in the poll above one of our reds. Last but not least, it's our match preview. We've got three absolute bangers for you. First, Chelsea versus Tottenham. Let's skate over this pretty quickly, gentlemen. This week's Continental Club being quite Premier League-centric. It's on Sunday, 4pm. We might be doing an internet reacts uh, for that as well, so keep your eyes peeled. Huge tie for both. Pretty much yeah. seals Champions League football for Spurs if they win. Chelsea need mm. to win in order to claw back the ground on them. I think they're, what, five points ahead? They're five points mm. behind, yeah. yeah. Um, but... On the continent, Doug, Bayern versus Dortmund. And this is massive for Dortmund, not so much Bayern, because they've been imperious this season. Yeah. They've rendered the Bundesliga totally obsolete, haven't they? Well, the, well at, least, at least the title race. Yeah. Uh, the, the race for Champions League football is quite interesting. Uh, Bayern, 27 points off second place Schalke. Only two losses all season, and I'm pretty sure they were both under Ancelotti. Uh, but have drawn three of their last four games, nil-nil. So Ooh. firing blanks at the moment that might give Dortmund a little bit of encouragement. I, I mean, how do you quieten uh, Robert Lewandowski, the Polish assassin, 28 goals this season and two assists. Uh, I don't think anyone else has over 10 goals, although Thomas Muller has nine, uh, so he might get his 10th against Dortmund. Uh, do you know that Robert Lewandowski has reached, he reached 100 goals in the Bundesliga in 121 games for Bayern. Wow. He's their so highest good. scoring non-German yeah. and he He's only two goals behind Thomas Muller, yeah. and Thomas Muller's been there since 2008. Since birth, yeah. He's crazy. been playing in the first team since 2008. Check that crazy. out, scout report tomorrow um, over on FD. Yeah, ah, there nice you go. Plug. And nice also, one. also as part of a, a section about how he's so good against Dortmund as well, isn't it? So, it is. So, so it's almost as good as we planned it. Uh, but <laughs> what about Dortmund? What do you guys chat tomorrow. about Dortmund? Um, yeah, I mean, they, they've had a strange season, haven't they? I think they had their best ever first eight games of a uh, of a Bundesliga season, obviously at the start of the season. And then, uh, yeah, the wheels quickly came off, didn't they? Um, but yeah, having said that, I think Stöger has steadied the ship. The, the team were in free fall when he came in. Um, and it looks like he's close to getting them Champions League football. Obviously, they're only one point off Schalke. 
um, who are in second, but then in fifth are Bayer Leverkusen, and they're only four points off Borussia, um, Eintracht Frankfurt, who are having, obviously are having a fantastic season in between them in fourth. Um, so yeah, the, the, the race for, for those places is pretty interesting. Um, any of them could drop out, I guess, but, um, but Borussia are, yeah, they're in decent form at the moment. I believe they're probably in slightly better form than Bayern. They've won three of their last five games, drawn the other two, so they're unbeaten in those games. Um, so a quick score prediction, what do you guys think for this first one? Um, I'm going to go for a comfortable Bayern 2-0 win because Der Klassiker tends to be won by yeah. Bayern and the team with Lewandowski in it. Yeah. Uh, what about you, gents? Just to be interesting, I'm going to go for yeah. a 1-1 draw. Um, Bayern haven't been in great scoring form, as yeah. we mentioned there. Dortmund are keeping it quite tight in the back in the last uh, five games. I think they've won three of their last five, as McCubbin said, all by one goal margin. Um, so it's not been a, a goal fest. I think they'll uh, get a draw out of this. Fair play. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, unfortunately, I'm going to defy your logical uh, conclusion mm. there, Dougie. And uh, yeah, I think, yeah, considering that Borussia are in good form and Bayern aren't in the best form, uh, points towards a, uh, an absolute rout for Bayern. Fair. Um, next tie, uh, and this is a sort of must win for different reasons for both mm. sides. It's Juventus against AC Milan, that's on Saturday at 7.45. Um, Juve, two points clear of Napoli, although they do have to host the part not pay. Uh, and Milan are sixth, four points behind Lazio, and they're looking to sort of continue their recovery under Gattuso, aren't they? Consolidate their position maybe for Europa League football, um, and keep pushing until the very end for Champions League football, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen, does it? Juve, though, Immense. Only lost once since October, and that was 3 2 against Sampdoria, which was pretty uncharacteristic of them mm. because lost and conceded three goals. They've been watertight yeah, at the back again the this season, despite losing mm. Benucci. Bonatti has sort of stepped in, he was largely a bit part player last season. Barzagli is sort of defying his age, and uh, Chiellini's, on and on. Chiellini's uh, shock still a savage <laughs> uh what do you boys think about this got any thoughts on this game yeah well milan are in actually really good form they've won eight of their last nine league games um and if it wasn't from if this season didn't include september to december try and imagine that for a second they'd actually be doing a lot better they only won three games in 14 in that period wow. uh losing seven of them and drawing uh mm. four um, and they're going well despite not having a regular goal scorer their 20 year old striker patrick catrone uh, is the only player in double figures in the league, he's got 11 goals and two assists. So it's been a good, league, uh, good campaign for him. And there's only two other players, Andre Silva with eight and Sousa with seven, who have scored more than five goals. Um, but has there been any key element of their revival, McCubbin, under Gattuso? What sort of, what's he done to change it up in a way? Well, I mean, surprise, surprise, the man who managed to get Pisa relegated with the best defensive record in Serie B last mm -hmm. season has, uh, has, yeah, managed to shore up AC Milan's defence. They've only conceded five goals in the last nine league games, and that was including two against Kiev in the last game, which they did win. Um, so yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he's he's tightened them up at the back for sure, and um, and also yeah, I think the rise of the this this little kid Patrick Cotrone has really been a boost to them. Um, he's the obviously a finisher. I really like. Yeah, him. he's fantastic. He seems to have like all the attributes of a great number nine, and mm. that. You know, talk about Gabriel Jesus. Um, this this guy seems like someone who can yeah who can do it at quite a young age. And I believe he was your one to watch this week on. He was on football Monday. Yeah, yeah. Go and check out me and uh, me and Zach so talk many about him. This week. Yeah, it's great. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, synergy if that's what you call it. But um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I think I think yeah I think he's been a big boost. Obviously, like he scored. Um, the winner against Inter, which we also talk about on Football Mundial, but he scored the winner against Inter back in December in the, in the Coppa Italia. And kind of since then, since December, they seem to have gone mm. on this run. So I think there's, yeah, I think just morale in general is good at the San Siro right now. Um, and like, I think, yeah, Gattuso is one of those managers where I think if it is going well, it's going really, really well because he's sometimes got his, the shit and yeah, he, he's, <laughs> such a, he's such a ridiculously charismatic man. Yeah. That, um, and also slightly yeah. terrifying. Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. So like, like I mean, when after, when the pit, after the game, just like slapping them all on the yeah, heads yeah. and just like walking yeah. away. But didn't he? I think he, I can't remember what game it was actually. after. Yeah, exactly. I can't yeah. remember what game it was after. But he said to them before the game, "If you win this, and I think it was after they'd been on a bad run of form, if you win this, then you can all slap me on the head at the end of the game." And so there's this video of them just all slapping him on the head. <laughs> it's great. Uh, but they don't actually do it too hard because obviously they don't. Well, you yeah. know, they're still scared of him. So, um, uh, so and, yeah, and I should be as well. Yeah. Uh, Joe Jordan is the only man I was about to say that, that <laughs> throttle. Yeah. Who, who, can, who can stand the wrath of Gattuso. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, I talked about him briefly on Sunday Vibes and the most interesting evolution 
for me, I'll do this quite quickly. Um, under Gattuso has been just a reversion to the 4-3-3. Mm. So Andre, when Andre Silva came in, when uh, Rodriguez came in, basically when AC Milan spent a shit to eliminate the start of this year, they sort of, to, to shoehorn these players into the side, they went to a 3-5-2. And I think the logic was also, hey, we just bought Bonucci, mm. arguably signing of the season for £30 million. Mm. This is a guy who's completing eight long balls a game. You know, is intercepting however many balls. Uh, is, is one of the best uh, sort of centre backs in the world. Uh, let's get him in the three, like he was at Juventus. Mm. Problem is, you know, they weren't really built to, to facilitate yeah, that. The, the wing yeah. backs weren't uh, in the same vein as sort of a Lichtsteiner and a, or a Sandro or mm. um, whoever else as a mower, um, and they didn't have partners of the you know the calibre of Barzagli and, and Chiellini despite Romagnoli having a very good season so far actually I think people AC Milan fans I've spoke to have, have been uh, very sort of uh, have been singing Romagnoli's praises more so than Minuti's mm. this season um, but yeah he, he went back to a 4-3-3 from sort of Montea's uh, failed 3-5-2 um, but it's, it's Kessier and Bonaventura their form has improved mm. dramatically under Gattuso, I think they've contributed to 75% of the goals as well. Really? Since that may have come down in recent yeah, weeks, because yeah. I looked at the stat a couple of weeks ago, but since Gattuso took yeah. over. So he's getting the best out of this prodigious young mm. talent in central midfield. Bonaventura is joining the attack because whoever they played up there, be it Catrone, be it Andre Silva, um, Kalinic, is it? Mm. They were quite isolated before, they weren't scoring any goals. Um, and Bonaventura is now sort of joining the tap, chipping in, and uh, Suso is doing the same as well. Suso, very cool, you little player, big fan of his as well. Yeah, never but um, it, score never predictions, uh, that's my two penny on, on AC. Uh, I think Gattuso has done a good job, whether or not he's a long term solution. I, I suppose they'll, they'll see what sort of calibre of manager is available come the summer. Oh, yeah. um, but score predictions, I'd like to see Juventus win this. Uh, not Juventus, sorry, AC to win this, just, just to keep the, the league title interesting. But I think it'll probably be. 3-1 to Juve. Mm. Reckon, um, yeah, I don't think they'll concede. I think it'll be 2-0. Oh, actually, I'm, I'm going to go with the uh, romantics uh, yes, positive point of view here. I, th I think I just I can just see Juventus not winning this year. I think I think Napoli, it's for Napoli this year. I just see it somehow. But having said that, probably won't happen. But I'm going to go for a 2-0 uh, convincing win from Milan. Oh, Bonucci, wow. Bonucci is going to re-enter Turin. If and, that um, happens, yeah. I will uh, buy you an ice cream sundae at oh. lunch. And you can have oh, it on the next Continental Club. Fantastic, yeah. <laughs> True Banana split. Fantastic, uh, I'm anyway, looking forward to that. Let's roll straight into the end board, guys. Yeah. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for submitting all of your questions. Uh, please do so on Twitter, Instagram, in the comments below if you want to feature next week. Uh, guys, what else is going on on Football Daily? I think we've already plugged the shit out of every other show <laughs> we've much. got going, but can you think of anything else? Football Daily after the Yeah, so uh, about an hour before this drops, the FN will be out. I think Zach and Dave are on yeah. it this week. It'll be another entertaining uh, episode of ridiculousness uh, with those oh, two heads. heads of ridiculousness. Yeah. Uh, and Stat was the champions this weekend. Can't remember who's uh, up against each other. But Zach versus Smithy. Oh, uh, there you go, yeah. Sm or Smith. 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 Smith, not Smithy. <laughs> but, uh, Two separate people. But yeah, and go and check out last week's one as well. That was pretty good as well. So um, yeah, Stat was the champions in full flow. So keep an eye out for all them.